Good morning, everybody. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Notice the meeting is properly posted Friday, February 24th, 2017. I have a curious discussion and possible action to approve the minutes from the special meeting of February 8th and the regular meeting of February the 13th. So moved. Uh, if we could. On. I will throw my motion. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I need to check with you. On the on the minutes on the, uh, of the 13th, Randy, the uh, the motion to make a recommendation to the board to proceed with utility lo relocation. Well, I believe that was you because I voted against it. Okay. Does that sound right? I couldn't tell. There was multiple people talking. I believe you are correct, Mr. Oh. Chairman, yes. that I made that motion. Yes, Mr. Chairman. You can just drop that. Thank you. If I call my me Mr. Black, yeah. that's my father. That's my father. <laughs> Mr. Chairman's my father, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, on the 8th, we're good, I think. And then on the 13th, Pat, if we just make that one chance, yeah, please. I, I move to... The Honorable Randy. <laughs> I, move, I move to approve the minutes of February 8, 2017, meeting as uh, drafted, and February 13th as amended. Thank you, sir. And I'll second... That. Aye. Aye. Okay, item number four, discussion, review, and possible action regarding updates from staff on the capital projects for TIF 2. A is the annex roof replacement. Uh, one little piece of information on that, that roof program that the state runs is under, maybe gets chopped in this uh, budget go around. They're asking for us to maybe send a letter in support to keep the program. Um, I, it is a benefit. I'd hate to leave that. Makes it easy to procure stuff. That's not covered by the agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me let me ask the question this way. We have in regard, in uh, regard to that, if we don't get moving on this quickly, there's the potential that the program may not exist. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, item B, the annex elevator. Anything on the annex elevators? Okay, item C is the new front security, or new entrance and uh, security. Nothing there. Okay, item D, exterior maintenance and lighting. We've done the lighting portion. Randy gets his thunder colored lights. Anything on Layoff tape. maintenance, key, any additional? Nothing, okay. Item E is Mike Ford demo. Contract's been awarded on that. Is there anything new? Uh, the Mike floor has been <coughs> cleaned out for the most part. I'm awaiting a telephone call from our elevator service provider to give us a per hour figure so we can position one of their repair men here before the day begins to make sure our elevators are going to be up and running uh, during the day. The contractor will be using the elevators at night to ferry material down to the Sally Port and that has the potential to uh, do some damage. Mm -hmm. Is Kone doing that out of the kindness of their heart, or are they expecting to be paid? Is that a rhetorical question? <laughs> <laughs> they expect to be paid. It is an overtime component. But and those funds will come from this pool of money? And we set money aside knowing that that would be potential to have to return it all later before this contract is over. But it, it, it would come out of the tip allocation. Okay, thank you. And that work order is effective for Wednesday. And the courts are fully aware. Okay. I don't know if they'll show up Wednesday, but their time starts Wednesday. All right. So Renee is aware, and uh, all the parties been notified. Okay. Anything else? Item F is night for repurchasing. Probably got to tear it down first, huh? Yeah. Okay. Item G is the jail lower roof. That's been awarded. It's contracted. Uh, yeah. We're just waiting on the state to get in the work order. I think they're busy somewhere else and they're stalling a little bit. That's why I had the conversation with him. Uh, so I'm, I'm ready for him to begin. Okay. And then 
H is the uh, jail fire notification. I heard there were just a couple of items to address, but we, we yeah. remain off the fire watch. Yeah. That correct? We're off fire watch. Right. Um, they're still waiting on a few announciators and, and um, I think the smoke detector is set up, but it's, it's substantial. It's That's all in now, so the vendors may come <coughs> in. Yeah, it's just, they're waiting on parts. This is the last uh, information I have. Okay. All right. Can we get a motion then on item 4A through H to receive the report? Move to receive report of staff. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Item 5 is discussion of the impossible action regarding the ongoing space utilization plan implementation for the annex. Anything we really need to take up today on this? Or I don't have anything. It should be on Wednesday for the last recommendation of the Yes. I will tell you that uh, in the new jury assembly room, we have mechanical, more mechanical pieces and parts that have come on the property to be installed, uh, the ductwork and so forth. So you'll hear some banging and clanging down there. Um, the mechanical uh, and infrastructure aspects of that are moving ahead and moving fairly quickly. Okay. Bring Anybody? Move to receive report. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item six, discussion of the impossible action uh, regarding the proposed repurposing of the Pauline Meyer shelter located at the Oakland County Juvenile Bureau Complex. Anything on this one? Uh, we did hold the interviews for the uh, MEP provider and FSD was selected that we can't contract with them because we have no funding in place. So at, you're, at some point we'll see an item on this agenda to recommend FSD for us to then, if we concur, recommend to the board. That kind of long drawn out process. Well, but you, you probably don't want to move ahead. And so we have some other things, yeah, locked in, but that would be the, that would be the, the plan, right? But the, the subcommittee that was created to do the interviews would make a recommendation to the full infrastructure who would then either say yay, nay, or something else and on up to the BOCC. Okay. Can I speak up real quick? Sure. I'm the Lone Wolf here. No DHS, no Sarah, so go easy on me. Um, the DHS is still evaluating and looking at the situation. Sarah and I feel like the crux of the matter is... Oh, that's the next agenda. It's the next agenda. Sorry. Oh, you're on the lease? You're yeah, I guess so. Yep. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. Uh, move to accept report on item six. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Item seven is a discussion of the impossible action regarding an admitted lease with DHS for the proposed repurposing of the Pauline Meyer shelter. So, kind of, well, everybody's here all the time, but as a recap, this uh, this group had uh, <coughs> proposed some language that we were going to recommend to the board regarding the lease. DHS basically contacted us and said issues with that. We put it back on to take a look at. DHS indicated there were some things within the lease that they couldn't do regarding primarily um, replacing the HVAC system if that was required, and now we're still in the holding pattern. So Thank you. You're on. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, we'll be meeting with DHS leadership, I guess that's how they call themselves, to um, try to get to their bottom line. But I think the question we now understand is if a private donor does put in the HVACs and the new roof, which might cost about $500,000, will the county or DHS then be able to agree to this bigger maintenance issue? And that's what we're putting back to DHS. Um, we're not going back to DHS to raise money for the new HVAC or the roof, but someone, you know, if we put $2 million into this county building, someone other than a private party is going to need to agree to that maintenance cost or we really will kind of start looking in a new direction. But I think that's where we are. 
it's not like a threat, but I mean that's just where we are. We're going to go back to DHS hopefully it's this week to say, all right. Um, Will you or won't you? <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. and until we see whatever it is that DHS might offer as a counter proposal, I, I don't know that I or can speak to it. Or, yeah. oh. I guess I still have one minor concern. I was with Judge Davis this week, and I think over the years, when there have been maintenance issues over there, I'm not quite sure if they've been able to be addressed. I don't know. Um, you know, where those funds came from when something was falling apart. But, you know, if we're going to put $2 million of private money in, we need to be sure the building will be taken care of. But that's all for me. Thank you. Okay. You guys have anything else? On item seven. Move to accept the report. On item seven. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, the item eight, discussion reviewing possible action regarding the mediation of mold at the Oklahoma County Jail. Okay. Stay. An update here? <coughs> yeah, they are down there working uh, on remediating that kitchen. Time frame? About how long? Uh, I, I don't have a time frame for it for how long it will take them to actually do the work. They are actively working. Yeah. And so, and the kitchen's in the salad port then? In the temporary kitchen's in the salad port. Okay. You guys have anything? At this point, nothing else we need to do related to this, correct? Right. Okay. Move to receive. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item nine, discussion of <coughs> possible action. Uh, regarding kitchen options, including the mechanical equipment at Oklahoma County. Okay, now this is the next step. <coughs> Once they clean that mold, uh, what we were originally thinking was to put the mechanical and ventilation systems back in place that aren't working so we can keep the air circulating so it will not reoccur. We had in some early estimates on that, uh, about a half a million dollars. We went through an interview process to select a mechanical engineer to put those plans together. Uh, Guernsey was selected and negotiated their contract at about $47,000, which we do have the money set aside to move forward with that option. But before we pulled the trigger on that, <coughs> uh, there's been some talk about other options that we might look at. This is kind of a repeat of 2013 when the sewer system went down. We looked at maybe maybe we moved that kitchen out of the basement up to the first floor or something. And that was actually in a contract to look at. And due to money and time constraints, we went a different direction. Well, now here we are in 2017, same issue. Might you want to move that out of that basement? You do have some money and time constraints, but now is the time to look at it. Um, kind of looked at <coughs> some places on the first floor it might go. Uh, some of your issues, the, the floor loading capacity would have to be increased uh, before you could move anything to the first floor. And then you got to find your uh, your piping systems. You still have to have mechanical and, and uh, ventilation wherever you put it and uh, fire suppression, electrical panels, that sort of thing. So it's going to be more expensive to move it to the first floor, but it may be better in the long run. So how much more? Uh, all I can do at this point is I, I'm using the cost estimate we got from our consultants when they did the master plan, using their per square foot cost. You're looking at maybe two and a half million plus or minus versus the half million downstairs. We might be able to beat that number, but there are a lot of issues. And then there was some talk about uh, portable kitchens in the parking lot, maybe. Um, and that involves the city on planning zoning issues, hooking up to their utilities. Uh, 
we went through that before recently when we did the OSU center out on Sixty Third Street. So those are three options I'll, I'll put on the table. All have their challenges, but we need to probably make some decisions sooner than later. Keep now, are you, Mr. Yeah, Chairman, yeah. are you talking? Just jump in. Okay. Um, some of these sound like temporary fixes, but the moving to the first floor, that seems like a permanent fix. So I'm just kind I of. consider that a permanent fix. Okay. So, yeah. does. Um, do we currently have a contract with Guernsey? Uh, there was one negotiated, there's not one approved. For follow up? Sure. You just jump it. Got it. No, yeah. yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. And what is that contract for? It was just to design a mechanical system in the basement <coughs> that they were the consultant for the uh, sewer system in the basement and actually had negotiated for them to look at this first floor option in 2013. So they've been selected twice okay. for this basically same issue. If you ask me, we're not, we do not do not need to go to a selection again. You just need to amend their scope. And and so redoing in the basement is a cost of about five hundred thousand. Is that correct? And that's an estimate that we have. Yes. And then moving to the first floor, you're looking at about two point five million. That's an estimate that we have. Some feel like that's low. Some feel like that's a little high. So. And then to and then. As far as the parking lot option that you said that would be a portable kitchen, is that correct? Yes. So how long would, would we have to make that? that if I could, yeah. that's kind of something that I've looked at just on my own, jumping on the internet, doing some research. It would basically be similar to what the military uses, so temporary, permanent in essence, a, a high quality tent, um, floored, um, so it would be, it would be a, a fully operational kitchen that could stay operational uh, until... So put like portable buildings, kind of like what they do. Yeah. Things yeah. like that. All yeah. Right. yeah. Um, and I haven't gotten too far into it, I just know that if our military can use it and it's a viable option for them, it would seem that might be. Now, that itself comes with issues in fixing the utilities, but it would also may present a, a parking issue for staff at the jail as well. We're very okay. landlocked down there. So you got the transport as well. And and there's yeah. other small issues, but it's... Right, there are, yeah, there are other issues in moving the food from within the perimeter. But, but the 500000 too repair the basement is only for air handling, correct? That does not include the 125 to do mold remediation before we go in there. It doesn't include the mold remediation the two times after or any of the mold remediation that may be needed going forward. So we're looking at a million dollars just to go back in the basement. On phase one is mold remediation, what we're doing right now. <laughs> right. 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 Two more rounds after that, essentially, is what we think. Well, we, we don't know for sure. It depends on how fast it comes back. See, there we go. And there's done work that needs to be, that I don't think yeah. is in the 500 either. We don't have a, we don't have a solid number or even a, a solid guesstimate on that yet either. Is that correct? That's correct. So essentially, are we in a fact finding? Uh, scenario right now, just trying to gather all the information we can about the different options before we make a decision, or are we it's giving direction? The, I mean, the issue is the basement with the mold. You have two large units generating damp conditions down there, being the laundry and the kitchen. So it's going to be one of those things that we continue to face until it's addressed properly, yeah. which is going to be the best route. That's what we have to decide. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to be more expensive up front to remove and place separately, but are we saving money in the long run? 
Well, and, and a couple of these things to be fair, and I, I think here's probably not the right word. I think we should get the input from the sheriff's office as well, since they're the end user and they're they're the ones preparing all these meals. I think maybe out of item nine, if you guys are agreeable, we could instruct Stacy to visit with the sheriff's office about these three options in a little more detail. Maybe have Stacy uh, try to get a better idea of what a kitchen in the parking lot would look like, um, both operationally and cost-wise, and, and come back to us um, with some more information. So much. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, I'm sorry. I think we're solving half of the problem now. I know when we went through the same discussion in 2013 that the preferred option was to move it out of the basement. And what got us was the time because we were in a portable kitchen and we were spending the extra money on the styrofoam and stuff. So the clock was ticking. And then the cost to move it out at that time was prohibitive. So I think it's going to be the same thing again. Um, but maybe we do it this time. I don't know. Well, I think that's where the sheriff's office will come in because they can get, advise us on the operational side of the thing. You know, Miles pointed out we're going to have to move the food from, if you were in the parking lot, for instance, from the parking lot into the facility, distribute it, et cetera. I mean, you know, I, I don't think any of us would be interested in making a recommendation that at the end of the day it turns out to cause operational right. issues. So I want to more information today. We needed to start the discussion so we can advance the ball in one direction or the other. Okay. See, anything you want to add to that? So Stacy, to get with the sheriff's office regarding these three options, try to bet maybe what's I think we do feasible, acceptable. What's that? I think we do it similar to what we just did. We get somebody from this committee to go with and assist. Okay. I'd be more than happy to do that. All right. So, right here, you sound like something you would be. You can take a vote, but oh, I nominate Miles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's a motion that Stacy and Miles <laughs> visit with the sheriff's office to get their input regarding uh, the repair and overhaul of the kitchen and basement. The possibility of relocating to the first floor, as well as the possibility of setting up some kind of semi-permanent structure in the parking lot uh, as a kitchen, and to come back and just make a report to us on the feasibility of those three options. That's good enough. So moved. And second. Thank you. Guys. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, discuss and review and possible action regarding potential property locations for new storage space for the court clerk and district attorney's records. And I think at the last meeting, Gretchen, you were going to try to get with the assessor's office. I did. I contacted them. Um, they pointed out that they'd given something uh, in November, and I explained that no, I'm going to something with more properties within the county, including the entire county. And that that listing was likely to be in sale. Um, new properties could be offered or sold. So they promised me they would get it to me. The problem that they're having is they're right in the middle of doing tax notices. Um, that's correct. That's how we for them. So I don't have anything back yet. Okay. I don't know. James, I suggest James be a better contact, possible contact, in other words, in yeah. the state. And I don't know if she had better luck. I did talk to Carrie, Car Carrie Carmen, who was deputy director of real estate and leasing for the state, and she spoke with all of her people, and she said they currently have no ideas whatsoever. They said maybe in the next six to nine months, they might have some small properties for rent, but that's all that they could even speak of. And I spoke with a, another gentleman, I think that Ron was on the key through the city of Oklahoma City, and he said no right off of the bat. The uh, Oklahoma City School Board, did we happen to reach out to them? No, I'm glad to. Okay. That, that old list from uh, November did 
did have a couple properties um, that weren't really close to downtown, but, uh, and of course I saw it uh, available, but there was one I noticed for Midwest City, and I think that list um, described whether it was metal or um, concrete or whatever you call it. It would kind of give you an idea of what was available. There was one that was, I think, just over 100,000 square feet, and it was a Midwest City Google Maps that would be a 20-minute drive, and that property, I think, was concrete. And I think their asking price for was $50,000. Now, of course, I don't know if the picture called moving ready. Sure. <laughs> and the other thing, you might check out if you happen to check on that building, check to see if there are any restrictions as far as uses, number of people, that kind of thing. I've heard, and I don't, you know, I don't, I certainly don't know, but I've heard that the reason it may be priced significantly Would different than everything else is because maybe it's in a flight pattern, I don't know, but maybe there's, maybe there's some pretty severe restrictions by somebody in the city or the federal government or somebody as to what can be used what that building can be used for and that kind of thing. So it may, I mean, it may turn out to be a huge bargain because it may be, we may only have two or three people in there, it may not be an issue, and it'd be awesome, but it's, it's certainly worth, um, worth checking to be sure that there's not some restriction that we're going to end up with. Yeah, and I don't know what the assessor has to go through to provide this for us. You know, if I'm asking some of them, right. what, but, um, and I just still do it. Would you like to offer your solution? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just um, remind the committee that we're under the gun. We're full. Right. I know this is, I'm uncomfortable with where we are. I'm going to go for it. And that building, I think, was an old manufacturing plant. And just one more update, Mr. Chairman. I am meeting with Randy Allen. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully tomorrow he owns MidCon in Edmond. Um, they are in the business. They are in that business of storing other people's records, scanning. If you need something, scanning it and sending it to you. Um, and so we're willing to exhaust every option that we can to try to come up with something that's feasible and workable. I'm just trying to picture. I was looking back, Gretchen, trying to find the property you were talking about. Mm -hmm. There was a, there was, in one of our previous meetings, I think it might have been on the, the 13th, there was a list that had two properties that were currently for sale. That was the one down the street and then one on 44th Street. And then there was uh, another list that comprised six properties, two of which were the those mentioned previously. And then... The one she's talking about is outside the four mile radius. Okay, so we got, yeah, that's a different list that we. Yes. Okay. Yes. So if we can just say to get that list or something. No, that's what they're working okay. on. Okay, all right. Yeah, that's the list that, that he tried to say, oh, I've got to take it. And I said, well, but you did that in November. Okay, that's the list that is being built. I got gotcha. you. Right. So right. hopefully I was a little confused. Better. Okay. And the list was kind of awkwardly. <coughs> and post, um, it took a little work, you know, to to go through it because some of it was for lease for sale, the construction material. It's not impossible, but um, it, it it could be an easy read. Hey, uh, Mr. Sullivan. Yes, sir. On that previous list, the one the one of the six properties. And it apparently was on the market, but it just met the criteria that you guys had established. The 3501 North Santa Fe, have you been in that building? I've been in it. Uh, the, the cheapskate in me just was looking at the price per square foot and curious about it. If I remember, we drove, we drove all those properties initially, and if I remember right, there were some, maybe some offices or something on that one, maybe it was a little bit different, um, but no, I, I'd have to. We, we drove them out too, but we didn't get in every one of them. Some of them were actually occupied. Okay. I was just curious. I mean, I, I saw the price per square foot and 
sometimes you get what you pay for, right? Well, that's just out of the 36, so it's not about It's an easy gift to get to location. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else? Yeah. Do we need to do anything on this one, or just? Well, we'd like, like to get the list from back on this side. And then I guess Jane's going to check with the school board now. And uh, anybody else that you want to check out before we put a, another list to you. The radio will get you to right there later. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and we just appreciate the community putting it on the agenda and keeping the conversation going. Okay. All right. Anything else? Uh, any other brilliant ideas for you? <laughs> I'll share with everyone after the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, new business. Oh, no. <laughs> no, wait, yeah, move to move the new business <laughs> report. All right, move to receive. Okay. All in favor? Aye. I I have a love in this new business. Is there any new business other than Randy's brilliant idea? <laughs> okay, seeing none. Uh, number 12, citizen participation. Anyone? Item 13 is adjourned, and there's probably. Unless something pops up, our next meeting would be um, terrible with math. Uh, March. Turn Drake week? Yeah. It's the second Monday of March. Okay. All right. Motion to adjourn? Yes. Yeah. So moved. Second. All favor? Aye. Aye. Well done. Woo